All right, I'm Dave Ratt, and I've got some fun stuff to talk about today. Let's talk about subwoofers on an AUG send and why it is important and actually founded in the realities of the way the equipment works and microphones function. Um, now, you don't need to have subs on an AUG send, but subs on a separate send or actually the ability of not sending something to the subs. Um, this is more important than a lot of people realize, and there's some pretty well-known engineers out there that still mix in that kind of preschool mentality of subwoofers on left and right, everything goes everywhere, as if it's some sort of audio purist concept. Um, you know, hey, why would you separate out subs? Why don't we just take a microphone left and right and we just send everything to left and right, stereo, it's just left and right. Why would you do anything else? And I'm gonna, let's talk about why microphones don't pick up the sounds we actually hear the way we hear them. Microphones, are challenged in the fact that they cannot tell the difference between sound and mechanical vibration and wind. Now we have three different entities here. We have sound as we know it, which is uh, the vibrations traveling through air, which is what microphones are meant to pick up and it's what our ears will hear. There's also wind. Wind will come through and wind doesn't necessarily need to have sound that we can hear or doesn't necessarily make sound that we can hear, but it can have a devastating impact on those very lightweight diaphragms in microphones. And it can move them very far and create a lot of low frequency energy, which is not audible to us. One example of um, something similar to that is a hi-hat. If you put a microphone on the side of a hi-hat, that little puff of air coming out will blow on the diaphragm and move it and create low frequencies that are not audible and not actually generated by the hi-hat at any audible level. So the microphone distorts. It takes a certain sonic frequency uh, distribution and can tilt it drastically towards the low frequencies based on that pop. Same thing with putting a mic in the hole of the resonant head of a kick drum. That puff of air creates an inordinate amount of low end, which isn't naturally there. Uh, a breeze coming by, we all have done uh, shows outdoors, hopefully, and you've had overheads without windscreens. You get that <laughs> Well, nobody on stage hears that. The only place that's coming in is in the microphones because of the way that microphones are designed. Another issue with microphones is mechanical vibration. If you have a microphone, here's a microphone capsule, and it's, it's on a um, mic stand and it's moving, or you have a vocalist singing and they're shaking this around, well, the diaphragm itself has mass to it. So when you move the mic this way, that diaphragm, an object in motion, an object in motion wants to stay in motion and an object at rest wants to stay at rest. Well, it's at rest and you move it. It's trying to stay here. You move the microphone away. The diaphragm will move around based on its mass. And the heavier the diaphragm, the more mechanical vibration it will pick up when the um, actual mic is moved. And maybe you have overheads moving or vibration coming up through the floor of the drum riser. Uh, there's many ways we can uh, experience that. We can put shock mounts on there and try and reduce it, but it does exist and it's difficult to control. Um, Condenser mics versus dynamic mics. A dynamic mic has a fairly heavy plastic diaphragm or metal or whatever it's made out of, and it's fairly rigid. It's trying to stay rigid and move as a unified source, uh, unified entity with the sound that impacts it. And so because of that, uh, it's going to have more mass, and when you move it around, the diaphragm is going to try and... Um, 
generate some sound. A condenser mic, and a condenser mic is a very thin, lightweight film that is metalized over a grill or over some sort of um, mesh. And as it moves, it changes its capacitance. Well, that lightweight film, it doesn't have much mass, so it's more immune to moving it around and having the diaphragm not travel with it. But it will pick that sound up. But it has another issue. If there's no windscreen, like here, I took a little cone here. And if we take and move this, this diaphragm is going to want to, the wind will really catch it. It's, it's very, very susceptible to wind noise. Um, so you have condenser mics, which are susceptible to wind and any kind of breeze, which is why we um, tend to have more uh, windscreens on those. And we have dynamic mics, which are more susceptible to handling noise and moving around. And they both generate low frequencies well below frequencies that are generated by the environment they're listening to and that would be audible, that distortion, that extra low end that's being added. So here we have microphones that are adding massive amounts or considerable amounts of extra low end. A hi-hat creating low frequencies below 80 hertz and um, rumble coming from everywhere that is a distortion of the reality. So this concept of like, I'm gonna grab everything in stereo and put it to every speaker out there and send it everywhere is great if microphones did what they're supposed to do and avoided picking up things that aren't sound, like mechanical vibration and wind. So to solve this, we use high pass filters. Now high pass filters, basically roll off the low end. That should solve it, right? We just roll off the low end and get rid of those mechanical and wind vibrations. Have you ever tried to use a high pass filter to solve wind noise of an overhead mic? It'll get rid of some of it, but you still hear a lot of it. How well does a high pass filter work? And let's think about subwoofers on a separate send. When you have a high pass filter, you're turning down the amount of low end from that microphone going to the subs. When you have subs on a separate send, it can't get there from here. The low frequency, all that low end junk, cannot get to the subs. So I set up a little demo here, and let's take a look at what happens. Um, so let's go ahead and mute, 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 and play. I've got some old Elise's ADAT LX20s here running some um, live music. So I've got a little PA system here. I've got a subwoofer and a full range speaker on top of it. And if I bring this up, there's our full mix into the main PA and sub. So I bring that up. And here I've got the subwoofer by itself. And that's the full mix going into the sub. So now with this setup, we can try some different things. So here's your typical, I'm going to send everything everywhere. And we've got our subs and mains going. And I'm going to go ahead and start muting things. So let's go ahead and mute the kick drum and the bass. And I'm going to mute everything else. Except for the snare drum. And let's listen to what our sub's doing. This is just the snare drum. Why am I running snare drum to my sub? And listen to all that low end crap going to it. And let's turn on the toms. And let's turn on all the rest of the instruments except for the bass and kick drum. That's all the junk that's going to the sub from other instruments on stage. Well, we got high pass filters. So let's go ahead and give those a try. So I'm gonna go ahead and um, stop this and locate back to where we were. And we got old tape machine, um, kind of rewind thing going here. 
And let's hit play. Kind of fun. And so this is everything. This is everything except for kick and bass. Um, and I don't have guitars in this, so or vocals. Okay, so let's go ahead and listen. There's the floor tom. We can mute those. So this is just hi hat and overhead mics right now. And let's go ahead and see what happens when we put our high pass in. So I'm going to set this high pass at 90 hertz, and I'm going to put it on every single channel. All right, so we have... So there's what's going to our subwoofer. From our snare mic and overhead mics and if i open up the tom mics it's just junk going to the subs with the high passes on at 100 now the high passes right now are set at 90 hertz on every single input why would we want this extra energy just going blurring into the subwoofers what good does that do us the concept of having subs on an aux end, a lot of the um, bias against it is that, well, it might not, it might mess with the crossover point, or it's not going to uh, merge properly, or whatever. Um, it's not necessarily about subs on an aux. It's about not sending your hi hat to the subwoofer. It's about not sending your snare drum. It's about not sending instruments incapable of creating subwoofer frequencies to the subwoofers so that the mechanical resonance and wind and other garbage is being reproduced by the subs, avoiding that reproduction of garbage. If the instrument can't reproduce that frequency, nor do we want that frequency coming from that instrument, why would we send it to a group of speakers reproducing frequencies that we don't want them to do. The way to solve it is don't put it on a pot. Put it on a group send. Put it on a button send. Send the aug sends exactly at a calibrated level, zero. So you push a button and it sends the subs at the proper level, the same as it would send to left and right. And you don't push the button on the hi-hat. Or you do push the button on the hi-hat and I come up behind you and go, yo, dude, why are you sending hi-hat to the subs? It's very simple to not send all your instruments to the subs. You do need extra inputs uh, or extra crossovers or some sort of way of accessing the subs directly. But if your system's calibrated, not sending all that garbage to the subs will clean up your mix and not give you any downsides. I'll do more on this. It's a fun topic to talk about. And um, yeah, I'll mess around with this and hope you enjoy it.